All right, so some examples. So let's start here. Um, what we're going to do is that we're going to take circuit elements that we can combine, and we are going to combine them to make a simpler circuit, and we're just going to keep doing this until we have a one-element circuit. Um, and then when we have it as one effective capacitance, we can figure out what um, it, we can work with that. We have one capacitor. Okay. So, and I should say, you don't have to worry about being super clever because any way you combine these circuit elements, as long as it's valid, it's good. It's going to be right. So you don't have to do it in the same way that I would. Um, and for simple examples, there's not that many ways to do it, but for more complicated ways there are. All right, for more complicated circuits. All right, so here I'm going to first combine these two, and that leaves me with this circuit. So these guys go to this right here. Um, okay, so then I still have a point three microfarad capacitor here because I didn't touch it. And then these guys right there, um, capacitors in parallel add. So this is a 12.5 microfarad effective capacitor. All right, so in my next step, I am going to combine these guys. And I am left with a one capacitor circuit. Um, capacitors in series add an inverse, so if I want to have the effective capacitance of this circuit, I need 1 over 0.3 plus 1 over 12.5 inverse, and my units will be microfarad. Um, do watch the units. If the units are all in if the units of all capacitors are the same, you don't necessarily have to use the exponents and switch everything to SI. Um, but um, you can. You always can switch to SI. So if you're uncomfortable, go ahead and do it. All right. This circuit is exactly has the same circuit elements as this circuit, but we add them in different orders. They are in different places. So we are first going to combine these guys. Actually. I am going to circle these in green. So we're going to add these guys, redraw our circuit, and we are going to make the effective circuit like this. Now our 2.5 microfarad capacitor doesn't get touched, um, but this guy right here, these guys add in inverse, so I have 0 0.3 plus 1 over 10, the inverse of all of that in microfarads. And this circuit element has come from those two capacitors. And now I'm going to make, I'm going to combine these last two capacitors, and I am going to make an effective circuit, which looks like this where these two capacitors I have circled in red become this guy. And when you do that, the effective capacitance, these two are in parallel, so we just add them. It is 2.5 microfarad plus 1 over 0.3 plus 1 over 10, the inverse of all of that, in microfarad. All right, so ugly, but you can slowly um, piece it together. So I'm just going to draw schematically how you would do this one. I'm not going to draw the num put the numbers in because it's hard. I know how to combine these two circuit elements and these two circuit elements. So I'm going to do that in one step, and I am going to end up with an effective circuit that does that looks like this. So now I have three different chunks. Uh, let me do the color coding again. So this guy is from those two, and 
we are going to color these guys. I'm going to circle in red. They became this one. All right. For my next step, I'm going to combine these two. And I'm going to end up with the following circuit element. With the following effective circuit, sorry. And there we have it. Um, and I have taken the two circled in yellow and made this effective capacitor. And now that leaves me with three capacitors in parallel, which I can combine to make an effective circuit with one capacitor. So these three capacitors become one capacitor. All right, and you can get progressively more and more complicated circuits. The trick is to just slowly work your way through it and make sense out of it.